I mean, Daisy, I find the uncertainty factor a real problem right now in the economy. I, I was amazed that Sally McManus, the head of the ACTU, and I know she watches, uh, she actually had a go at me, not me personally, but people of my cohort. She said it was a boomer concept to suggest that a wage rise could in fact spark price rises, which could in fact start, spark more wage rises. I mean, small businesses right now are saying they don't know how they're going to pay the electricity bill, they don't know how they're going to pay the food bill, they don't know how they're going to pay the wage bill. I, I get it, Sally. I guess you, you, you know that big businesses have got plenty of money stuck away for a rainy day and it's pouring outside economically right now. But, uh, Daisy, this kind of splitting people up into groups things drives me completely berserk. <laughs> Yeah, look, <clears throat> Sally McManus, uh, what she's done there is kind of buy into what the millennials and Gen Z crowd call the OK Boomer meme, which was a thing that went around about yeah. a year ago where whenever someone, you know, over the age of about 50 dared to profess an opinion, usually about climate change, the young ones would go, OK Boomer, like it was a funny thing. But it was a very kind of ageist insult, sort of dismissing the opinions of a certain age demographic simply because they are of a certain an age demographic. Now, look, in the context of millennials and Zoomers, you know, I never did it. I love baby boomers, my favourite generation, love them dearly. But, you know, the younger ones can kind of banter on with the older generations. No offence to Sally McManus, but she's not actually young enough to get away with going on the OK Boomer train. <laughs> so, really, she should probably uh, avoid that. Hate to state the obvious, but it's true. God bless her. But on, you know, on a slightly more serious note, on the subject of the uncertainty look people are going to really suffer Gary um, you know in in the um, short to medium term we are heading into an extremely scary time you know the power is more expensive fuel is more expensive cost of living is going up we no one has any idea what wages are doing you know labor is saying one thing the unions are saying and the uh, was saying another who knows what is going to happen but you've, you've I just it's so wishy what is what should I say, but I so feel for people. This is a particularly scary time we are going into, um, and I don't quite see how we're going to come out the other end. Yeah, I mean, Aaron Watson, from a from a public you know affairs point of view, and, and you know, you and I share the Griffith University thing because I'm an ex Griffith graduate, first one ever actually elected to the Australian. Uh, parliament, first ever minister, first ever vice regal, that sort of stuff. But, you know, Erin, I find it astonishing because a lot of people now are going through, say, the university sector, wanting to study, wanting to learn, they need to also look back at history because what we're going through now is not different to things that have happened in the past. It did happen in the 70s, a lot of this, but we have to be very, very cautious about the steps we take and indeed still provide some certainty to people because I think people are despairing. Absolutely. And um, I'd love to say I know about the 70s, but um, despite the few wrinkles around here, I don't actually know I was born in the 80s. Um, but, you know, I think that my generation... and, and it's Somebody really must have told you. There, so it, mm, <laughs> <laughs> I've read a few history books, actually. But the point I want to make is Good, that yeah. people of my age, you know, late 30s, right, we haven't experienced difficult mm -hmm. economic times. We have, you know, 30 years exactly. of uninterrupted interrupted economic growth. That was our childhood, our adolescence, our early adulthood. This is actually the first, I mean, last year when we had the very brief recession was the first time my generation had any kind of concept of economic hardship. And dare I bring up the boomers, who I also love dearly, but um, my father said to me just the other day, you don't know what it's like to have 20% interest rates. Um, but, you know, we can learn a lot from speaking to this generation, what were the mm. mistakes that they made at that time, you know, particularly during the 90s, which he's talking about, and I think I was all of six or seven back then. Uh, we do have a lot to learn sure. from previous generations, and my generation really has not experienced difficult times. And I think the point that Daisy makes about this being so scary for people of our age is that we, we actually don't know what it's like to get through a difficult period. We don't actually have a bench of people in our parliaments that have dealt with really difficult times. And I think that's what happened in COVID too. You actually had a bench of politicians and ministers who were relatively young, who would have been babies themselves during our last recession. Yeah. And I think that this is a, this is a deficit in our, in our bench of decision makers that we have not only in parliament, but also in business as well. 
Um, and this, this is one of the things that Australia is going to have to grapple with. We need to look back into history. We need to respect and speak to our elders and understand what are the decisions we can make? What can we do to, to pull through this period together and get out the other side uh, stronger than we were before?